This is going to be a busy time of year because Ubuntu just released their latest long-term support release and because there's so many Linux distributions that base off the Ubuntu LTS, we're going to see a slew of distribution releases in the next couple of months. And one of the first ones to come out of the gate is Pop OS 2204. They just announced that particular release and today I'm going to take a look at the new release of Pop OS. I'm going to give it a spin inside a virtual machine. Pop OS kind of fascinates me as a Linux distribution because when System76, the makers of Pop OS, announced that they were creating their own Linux distribution and Ubuntu based Linux distribution using the GNOME desktop environment essentially, I thought what, what's the point? Because you already got Ubuntu, right? We've already got Ubuntu with the GNOME desktop environment, so why make an Ubuntu-based distribution using GNOME? It, it seemed kind of strange to me. But now that Pop! OS is starting to become a much more mature product, I see a lot of the changes they've made. This really isn't just another Ubuntu spin at this point. And what they're doing with the GNOME desktop environment I think they make probably the best GTK based desktop environment out there right now. The other big selling point for Pop! OS is just enabling all your hardware drivers and, and things like that, which you would expect that would be a big focus of Pop! OS being that the makers of it is System76, you know, a company that sells Linux desktops, laptops, servers. So let me switch over to my desktop and let's run through a quick installation of Pop! OS 2204 inside a virtual machine. I gave this VM 6 gigs of RAM and I gave it uh, two threads of my 24 thread CPU. Plenty of resources for this particular operating system. Now when you first boot into the live environment here in Pop! OS, you're greeted with the installer and immediately of course it's going to ask you for language and English is the default and that is fine for me so I'll just click select and then uh, what version of English I want US English of course and keep moving on the keyboard layout I want English US and that is selected so I'll just keep on and then more keyboard layout uh, I want the default I don't want any weird stuff like Dvorak or Colmac or anything like that and then what do we want to do with our partitioning do we want to do a clean install meaning erase the entire hard drive and then give Pop! OS 2204 the entire drive that's what I'm gonna do but if I wanted to I could click custom advanced and this way I could do some manual partitioning and that's important especially if you're going to dual boot alongside another operating system but for me clean install is correct so I'll choose that then it's going to ask what drive to install to now in this virtual machine I only have one virtual hard drive and let me click on that and then click erase and install and then it's asking for our name. Now I could give it my full name. I'm just going to call myself DT. The username for this computer will also just be DT. And I'm going to click next. Now let's create a strong and complicated password for the DT user. And then confirm the strong and complicated password. And then click next. Now do we want to encrypt our drive? As encrypting this drive protects data from being read. Yada, yada, yada. You guys know, you know, that's, that's good. Especially if your laptop, for example, is ever stolen. They would need your encryption password to ever access any data on the drive. So that's a good idea to encrypt your devices. It's ticked on by default. So I'm going to go with the default. I'm going to choose encrypt. And by the way, your encryption password, you notice I didn't have to set a, an encryption password. By default, the encryption password is going to be the same password as your user account's password. And now we get to the screen here. It says it's partitioning drives. It's extracting the files. I'm assuming it's uh, installing everything at this point. I'm going to pause the recording here for a couple of minutes and I'll be back once this portion of the installation has completed. And that portion of the installation took uh, about five minutes or so and now we have the option to restart the device, reboot the machine. That's what I'm going to do right now. All right, and now it's asking for our encryption password. Otherwise, we can't access any data on our drive, right? So let's enter the encryption password. And now we're at the login manager and let me go ahead and click on my username DT and enter DT's password. And we are logged into our desktop environment. I'm going to hit the super key to bring up our run launcher. And I'm going to search for displays. Let me go ahead and get a proper 1920 by 1080 screen resolution here. Click apply, keep changes, and then I can close out 
that. All right, and now, of course, when you first log in, you get a little welcome screen here. On the very first screen, of course, they ask you about the dock. Do you want a dock that resembles a panel, meaning it's full screen at the bottom, or would you rather have the dock not be uh, extend the entire width of the screen so it looks more like a dock? For me, I probably would go with no dock if this was my own machine because I, it really serves no purpose to have the dock there when I can just hit super and, and you know start typing for the program I want to launch not to mention you can set up key bindings for programs you launch all the time but most people are probably going to want a dock or a panel here at the bottom I'm going to leave it as the default setting and I'm going to click next and the next screen show workspaces button so here we have workspaces if I click on it all our workspaces are listed in a vertical format, which is the old school GNOME format, because in uh, modern versions of GNOME, GNOME 42 right now, the uh, workspaces typically are displayed horizontally in a list rather than a vertical stack like this. It really doesn't matter to me personally. I could take it or leave it either way. But do I need to have this workspaces button here? I probably don't. I'd probably turn that off. Do I want the Applications button, which gives us the Application Launcher, which is a different kind of launcher than just hitting the Super key. This is more of a proper run launcher where you just have a prompt and you start typing where the Application Launcher, you could do the same. It's got a, a little input field that you could type and and you know launch something immediately, but it also lists applications more like in a proper start menu, if you will. I'm going to leave the applications button here. Now, date and time, do I want to leave that here in the center? That's kind of odd, to be honest. I probably would want that to the right, you know, over here. <laughs> kind of, why is that in the center of the screen? I've never understood that. That's a decision that the uh, GNOME team has made. I could put it all the way to the left, which is kind of odd. I think most people just assume the time and date probably needs to be on the far right of a panel. I'm going to leave it in the center for now, just because that's the default. Then I'm going to click next. We've got the uh, gestures for those of you using this on a laptop i am not then we've got the option to switch to a light theme because the dark theme is turned on by default you notice when you switch to the light theme it changes wallpapers because in the newer versions of gnome and this was the same in the latest ubuntu 2204 when you switch between light mode and dark mode light mode and dark mode can have different wallpapers set to them so you notice when i switch back to dark mode you know, I get a different wallpaper. So that's a really nice touch. And then do we want to turn on geolocation? So this is for privacy. Do you want to actually uh, give certain applications your geolocation information? I don't. So I would leave that ticked off. And then I'm going to click next. Now it's asking for time zone because we didn't actually do this during the installation process, but I am in the central time zone here in the U.S. So I'm going to pick Chicago here in the U.S., which is in the central time zone. Then I'm going to click next. And then do we want to connect to any online accounts? I don't want to do that. Not here on camera in this VM. So I'm going to skip that. And then it says all done. Start using Pop OS. So click that button. Now one thing I can say about Pop! OS as far as a GNOME desktop is it's probably the best GNOME desktop out there because they take GNOME and they actually make it into something that people can use, something that looks normal out of the box. I, I hate to you know be negative about the GNOME desktop, but vanilla GNOME is kind of bad. And Ubuntu's version of GNOME, they do a lot to make GNOME rather usable. I, I don't mind mainline Ubuntu's version of the GNOME desktop with the bar on the left and all of that. But I do think that the cosmic version of GNOME here, which is uh, what Pop! OS is calling their uh, cosmic desktop environment, that, that it's actually, this isn't actually what's going to be the cosmic desktop environment. This is still GNOME. They've got some cosmic UI elements baked into this thing you know, to, to make it look like this. But eventually what the Pop! OS team is going to do is they're working on their own desktop environment called the cosmic desktop environment there basically it'll be a gtk based desktop environment that they have written entirely in rust and it's not ready yet but when it is i'm gonna be definitely taking a look at that but for now what they've done with gnome i find uh, this this is rather pleasing we have the the show launcher here so you've got an icon for the run launcher but honestly you don't really need that icon because you could just hit the super key the applications button, by the way, up here at the top, we could do super A 
to get the applications launcher, Escape, to get out of it. I really like the uh, Starry Night wallpaper with the pop logo on that. That's really nice. Uh, also in the dock we have Show Workspaces. So again, we didn't need the Workspaces button at the top, and we've got Show Workspaces down here at the dock. I probably would keep one or the other, but probably not both. Right now I'll just leave that in the dock. Show Applications. Well, I have Applications here. So really, I probably should just remove applications from here. Just put everything in the dock. Honestly, the uh, the pop team, what they could probably do is just consolidate all of this into one panel. Because honestly, there's hardly anything in this top panel. Really, I mean, you've got the time and date and you got a sys tray over here. You know, if you could put that down here, you know, and just consolidate everything into one panel because it, it, it would save on screen real estate. The, the, having two panels really doesn't make any sense because there's not enough going on in either panel to justify having two on the screen. Firefox is the default browser here in Pop OS 2204. Let's see what version of Firefox we are on. If I go to help and about Firefox, this is Firefox 99.0.1, 64-bit version. Let's close out of that. And for those of you wondering, is that Firefox a snap? Because obviously in Ubuntu 2204, uh, Firefox is only available as a snap. If I do a snap list, you see snap is not even installed in Pop! OS. They don't use the snapd daemon. There are no snaps installed. And while I'm here, if I do a uname-r, let's get the kernel version. We are actually on a slightly newer kernel version also in, uh, in Ubuntu 2204 because uh, Ubuntu was using still one of the 5.15 series, but here inside Pop! OS, they're on 5.16.19. So that is rather interesting. Let's get a uh, count of the installed program. So if I do a apt list dash dash installed, of course, I didn't do dash dash, I did a single dash. So let's do dash dash installed. And of course, that spits out all the programs that are installed with the apt package manager line by line. So let's get a line count by piping that into WC, the word count program, space dash L for line count. 1,733 packages installed using the apt package manager. Now, the apt package manager is not the only way to get applications installed here inside Pop because let's open up the Pop Shop. And you see I've got one here. I've got a notification here that's letting me know there is an update available. So you could take an update here. Uh, this was just released, I believe, yesterday, and already there are some updates available. I'm going to uh, skip taking the updates right now. But what I want to show you guys is if I go into the settings here inside the pop shop, the tabs at the top here, we have various things such as, you know, updates. You want to do the important security updates, the recommended updates. You want to do the unsupported updates. By default, they're all turned on. You know, a lot of this stuff, like the repositories that are turned on, just go with the defaults. I wouldn't play with any of this stuff unless you know what you're doing and have a reason to be playing around with these. Uh, but you also have this flat pack tab here. And this is the Flatpak repositories that are enabled by default. And Flathub is enabled by default. Meaning, if I search for a piece of software that's not in the apt package manager, for example, uh, Debian's repositories typically don't include any non-free software. So let's look for a proprietary piece of software that I know is available on Flathub. Discord. I'm going to hit enter and let me click on it and you see it gives us the repository that Discord is found in. It is found in uh, Flathub. It is also available from Pop! OS as a dib. So I actually could install Discord as either a flat pack or a dib. So that is rather nice that here inside their software center because this is something not a lot of Linux distributions do. Most Linux distributions don't have their software center offering not only native package manager installs, but also the ability to install uh, third party packages through things like Flatpak or Snaps or App Images. So that is nice that they have Flatpaks already integrated and ready to go out of the box. Well, let me close the Pop Shop. You know, that's a really nice graphical software center. Probably one of the best ones out there available for any Linux distribution. Now this is the file manager here and this should just be the standard GNOME uh, Nautilus file manager. If I go to about files, this is Nautilus 42.0, the absolute latest. I really like that icon set. That's a pretty sharp looking icon set. I know it's the little things, but you know, spit and polish. Pop! OS really knocks it out of the park. The GTK theme looks great. The icon theme looks great. The wallpaper, you know, everything looks, you know, really coherent, cohesive. It looks like a professionally made piece of software, which of course it is.
Also down here in the dock, we have our system settings. So this is very similar to the settings manager you see in other GNOME GTK based desktops, except the Pop OS team have a few extra things that they configure. I mean, you have your standard stuff like uh, network, Bluetooth, desktop settings. And with the desktop options, we still have some of the same options that we saw in the welcome screen, like turning back on the workspaces button or turning it back off. I'll turn the applications off. Do we want to show a minimize button? So here is the minimize button for a window, right? I can minimize it to the dock and then unminimize it by clicking on it. But if I didn't want the minimize button, I could get rid of it. But then how do I minimize something? Could right click and <laughs> is there an option yeah i'm not sure exactly how you would minimize a program maybe you just would never minimize a program maybe you just send it to its own workspace and just leave it there until you need it again me yeah i kind of like having a minimize button i also kind of like having the maximize button although you don't necessarily have to have a maximize button to go full screen because i think everyone knows now that you can double click a title bar in most window managers to get a, a window to go full screen so I guess you don't necessarily have to have the maximize button but I'd probably turn all of that on by default uh, especially for new users you know that may not be familiar with double clicking a title bar also in desktop settings we have our background options the wallpaper pack uh, most of these I've seen before in previous versions of pop OS a lot of really cool abstract art <laughs> like this really neat stuff just a, a gorgeous wallpaper pack I like this image here with the satellite <laughs> it was that uh, SpaceX uh, floating over uh, like a shoreline very cool I'm gonna go back to the default wallpaper because honestly I think that looks really really sexy and then we have the light mode dark mode again dock settings workspace settings where do you want the placement of the workspace picker? Do you want it along the left side? So if I go to workspaces, you know, there's the workspaces, but we could change that. We could tick it to have it on on the right side, which I don't know. Uh, either one is probably fine for me. I'm going to go back to the default left side. You also have settings for notifications. You have uh, applications here where you get a list of various applications, and I'm assuming that some of these applications have things that you can turn on and off. For example, like, like you can turn on and off the notifications for specific applications. That's really neat. Uh, privacy settings, I'm not going to get into that. But some of the uh, really Pop! OS specific stuff. Uh, well, we've got this firmware uh, tab here where you could get firmware updates for various uh, proprietary drivers and things like that which here inside this VM I don't have any of that stuff but for those of you actually running this especially running this on system 76 hardware that's really nice that they have this stuff so tightly integrated to the operating system itself also you'll notice we have OS upgrade and recovery down here it's going to do a little spinning animation here while I'm assuming it's syncing the repositories. Yes, yeah, checking for updates. Do we want to do automatic updates? Now that is a really nice feature because especially if you're installing Pop OS on like a family member's machine and they're one of those family members that doesn't know much about computers and you know they're never going to update their machine ever. Like you'll go back to their machine in three, four years and it's still never seen an update. You might want to tick on automatic updates and schedule it when to update. You know, you're typically you'll want to schedule it in the middle of the night. You know, if it's if, assuming the computer is on in the middle of the night, that's show update notifications. So that's when you get notified about updates so you've got all of that you have this new support tab that I don't believe was here in previous versions of pop OS uh, certainly some of this stuff in this wasn't here before now when you click on the support tab you get your model inversion QEMU that's the type of virtual machine I'm using and then we get our operating system and version pop OS 2204 LTS and then you get documentation and you click browse here and I'm assuming that opens Firefox yeah and it takes us to uh, support.system76.com. So their support website where you can search various articles, knowledge base articles, things like that. And then we have community support and Pop! OS chat. So if I click join, will that join a chat room? Yeah, it opens up a, a chat uh, site here inside Firefox using Mattermost. I'm not sure what Mattermost is, but you sign up for an account and I'm assuming you could chat with Pop! OS support and then we got create log archives for support if you click the button well, it's asking for sudo password 
and yeah, log archive was created, show in folder. Let me click that. Oh, oh and it created that and uh, zipped it all up. Well, I actually it created a tar of it. So what this is for, this obviously is for Pop! OS support. So somebody is having a problem with their machine and they can go to the support tab and they've got all this information they can share with the support team, including creating these log files. And then you know, they can just give those log files you know, to the Pop! OS support team and they'll know a lot about what was going on on this person's machine. So that is a really nice touch. Let me close out of the settings manager. Let's take a look at the calendar and this little widget here in the center. You know, it looks very nice. And do not disturb. I like that we have that setting there. And we have our system tray here. Oh, tile windows. Of course, one of the things about Pop! OS, their version of their GNOME desktop is they allow you to turn on tiling if, if you so choose where it, it kind of is a tiling window manager but it's not quite like your traditional tiling window managers because it's still one of the problems with the GNOME desktop is in a proper tiling window manager every monitor should be its own workspace independent that way you can move things around where on a, a desktop environment that's a traditional floating desktop environment like GNOME or KDE you know all of your monitors are one workspace typically and that's not really the way tiling window managers work so if you're somebody that's used to the way most tiling window managers work the workspace situation is going to bother you a little bit but at least turning this on does make the windows automatically tile like now when I click that it takes up full screen right that's the file manager now let me open up the terminal and it should tile yeah you know it evenly tiles it on each half so there is some very basic uh, tiling functionality built in I i'm sure they're going to get that fleshed out a lot more in future versions as well uh, more stuff in the sys tray we have our network manager volume manager and then of course the logout session if i choose power off logout do we actually have a restart option? We do. Overall, I'm very impressed with Pop! OS 2204. Just a little bit of time I spent with it. It looks amazing. Looks great. Their version of GNOME and a GTK-based desktop already looks outstanding. And the fact that they are working on their own cosmic desktop environment that hasn't been released yet, but when it is, you know, they're, they're writing it from the ground up, writing it in Rust, which is great because, you know, everything should be rewritten in Rust. That's the meme these days, right? <laughs> Rewrite everything in Rust. But I'm looking forward to that because really these Linux distributions like Pop! OS and like Ubuntu and various other uh, distributions that use GNOME, they shouldn't have to put in so much work to make the GNOME desktop environment usable you know, presentable to users. Like, I, I can only imagine how much work the Pop! OS team had to put in to make GNOME look like this and function like this. And at some point, yeah, you're probably putting in so much work that it probably makes sense just to wipe the slate clean with GNOME and just build your own thing. And, and I think that's great. Overall, I would say I would be happy installing this on friends and family member machines. Uh, if, if they brought me a, a computer that you know, had a little bit of RAM, you know, <laughs> they don't bring me a potato, but if they brought me a decent machine that maybe had Windows on it, maybe Windows is not working for them, it's riddled with viruses, they're looking to something to speed up their computer a little bit, yeah, I would have no problem putting Pop! OS 2204 on those kinds of machines. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I want to thank the producers of this episode. Devin, Gabe, James, Maxim, Matt, Michael, Mitchell, Paul, Scott, Wes, Alan, Armor, Dragon, Chuck, Mandarin, Reed, Diokai, Dylan, George, Lee, Lennox, Ninja, Mike, Erion, Alexander, Peace, Arjun, Vador, Polytech, Riala, Teats for Lutz, Red Prophet, Steven, and Willie, these guys. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about Pop! OS 2204 would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because without each and every one of these guys, I couldn't do what I do. I don't have any corporate sponsors. It's just me and you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see... More videos about Linux and free and open source software. Subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Hopefully, we'll be able to install the Cosmic Desktop on Arch.